There's three billion of them on the planet. Larger than the population of China, larger than the population of India. They are the largest tribe in the world. I think it's time we had a serious talk about young people. Science would tell us that young people are catastrophically hormonal, chaotically emotional, and obsessively self-centered. It's an amazing feat that they even get up in the morning. Media portrays young people, and we took a very short look in the last week in these kind of terms, louts, disrespectful, threatening, disengaged, and rude. In fact, a UK research report very recently said that young people gained more sympathy and empathy from the public when they died than when they achieved anything. What does history tell us? Well, let's go back to practically the dawn of civilization and listen to Hesiod in the 8th century BC, and I quote, I see no hope for the future of our people if they are dependent on the frivolous youth of today. For certainly all youth are reckless beyond words. When I was young, we were taught to be discreet and respectful of our elders, but the present youth are exceedingly disrespectful and impatient of restraint. Wow, did it get better? Roll forward 7,000 years and we hear from Socrates. The children now love luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority. They show disrespect for elders and love chatter in place of exercise. Children are now tyrants, not the servants of their households. They no longer rise when adults enter the room. They contradict their parents, gobble dainties up from the table, cross their legs and tyrannise their teachers. A harsh reality for young, of young people in those times. Roll forward to today and let's look at the most four known and common complaints by parents and teachers around the globe. My child spends his or her entire time in their room on their computer, locked and loaded with the door shut and only come out for meals. My child parties, socialises incessantly and travels around the world with not a care. My child will not shut up. They talk incessantly, constantly to each other and never, ever, ever break the chatter. They even wear down their parents and get what they want. My child is reckless and like a bull in a china shop. They have no self-control and no sense of the consequences of their actions. I want to propose to you a different view on these four most commonly heard every single day in our schools and in our parents and on the buses and on the trams of Melbourne and in fact the world that these very four attributes or complaints could indeed be the four most unlikely reasons why young people will save the world. I want to introduce you to Tom Dawkins. Tom Dawkins is, by all accounts, a techno, seriously offending nerd. He set up an organisation called Vibewire Inc, located in Sydney, and during the last five years, since he was 19, has connected 2,500 young people who are artists, journalists, photographers, who have never had the opportunity to showcase their work and have given them a voice online. Tom's vision was about young people getting engaged in political action. And during the election, they teamed up with Google and got 350,000 young people involved in political action online just in Australia. Anna Rose, you heard from Anna Rose's partner in crime, Amanda, earlier today. 
Anna Rose and Amanda set up the Australian Youth Climate Coalition. They've mobilised 50,000 young people in real action on the ground, talking incessantly, never shutting up, and they never will until they get what they want. They are persuasive beyond all measure, as you heard today. And they've mobilised and stalked premiers, prime ministers and UN officials. The power of partying. Elliot Costello, although he looks like an upstanding kind of guy, really loves a party. And his whole passion around social networking and connection is all about tying in his love of travel, but also really connecting with people where they live. It was not enough to be a tourist and to engage in social tourism. For Elliot and YGAP, it was all about connecting, really connecting with people on the ground and really making a difference where people lived. Partying was a great tool and networking and all the things that they do together to raise funds is a brilliant tool that YGAP uses. Jack Manning Bancroft. Jack Manning Bancroft was a, at 19 a star New South Wales cricketer, schoolboy cricketer. He alone has set up what he called the Indigenous Youth Mentoring Experience. Instead of going and representing Australia where God knows we need him right now in cricket, he decided to spend time with Indigenous young people, matching them with university students, and in two or three years has had 1,000 young people connected up with 1,000 university students. By 2020, he hopes to have 6,000 Indigenous kids in schools connected with 6,000 university students to help them fulfil their potential and think about all the aspirations and things that they could do. Jack is known as somebody who's not particularly subtle, potentially reckless and often a bull in a china shop. These young people and the young people they work with have had a profound effect on all kinds of social issues. They represent, and although they are remarkable, they represent a small number of young people across Australia and in fact across the globe in what I would propose to you is the single largest youth-led social movement since the 60s and 70s. There has not been such a movement of young people inspiring, leading, stepping up to challenges beyond their borders and beyond things that matter to them right in front of them. This is the most exciting and potentially extraordinary phenomena and opportunity we have. I really believe that this compels us to write a new narrative about young people. That in fact, history has turned. And that the narratives about young people and the things that they are purported to do and be are completely and absolutely ill-founded. And in fact, the things that we as adults believe them to be deficits in them, they actually are using collectively and together to change the world. We have an, we have an opportunity and a phenomenal, I think, responsibility to invest in these young people, to enable them, to resource them, to support them, and to let them take on the unprecedented challenges that face them. And there's no doubt that every single one of us in this room are very, very aware of the unprecedented challenges that face them. Although they make up half the population in the world, their population will diminish in the next 50 years. Young people are leading social movements and change around us, whether we like it or not. And their way of doing things, their way of being, demands of us to start a new conversation, to create a new narrative around support and access. Thank you.